points per game, which is ninth in the conference. And Fon Fon's coming in. Their last game on Saturday was a win at or against McMurray, and that was a 78 to 77 game. That was a very close one. Luke Deline was their leading scorer with 21 points. And for the Tigers, after tonight, they're going to be moving on to Saturday when they go to play the Red Devils at Eureka College. And that's also one of the top teams in the conference. And they're doing all of that without Shane Peehan, who is their superior scorer. He's also one of the top offensive threats in the St. Louis Intercollegiate Athletic Conference. We're having our introductions done today. Let's start with the coaches. Tigers, of course, coached by Alex Huseman in his fourth season here in Mount Pleasant. And then Fon Fon is led by Lance Thornhill, who's in his third season leaving the Griffins. We were talking before the game, you were, grew up somewhat close to the Fon Fon University, didn't you, Ken? Oh yeah, it's a St. Louis school, and very affluent school, and a very good school. And when I was in college and high school, it was an all-girls school, but they've expended, extended it now, and it's co-ed, so. Really, I never knew that they were, they started out as a women's only school. It's very right. interesting stat. Can't have those anymore. <laughs> no, you can't. And now the starting five for the Fon Fon Griffins. Coming in at guard, number 15, Luke DeLine. At forward, number 21, Eric Schlark. At number 23 at the other guard, it's James Wiggins. And number 33, coming in as a junior guard, it's Thomas Ritter. And then at number 43, another junior, it's Chris McCann. And you can hear Jerry Keeley in the background doing the intros for the Iowa Wesleyan Tigers. And we have starting off at number three, a guard out of Amana. He's a former Clipper. He's Jake Neubauer, the sharpshooter and the December Student Athlete of the Month out of Palmyra, Missouri. It's number five, Brock Butler. Another senior out of Rancho Cucamonga, California. It's Elijah Johnson at the center man, or the big man there in the middle. It's Austin Rebel coming in out of Abassadine, Australia, and he's been a getting more and more minutes for the Tigers as the season goes on. And then at the last spot in the forward position, it's the senior out of Gretna, Nebraska, Mitch Dre, who's returned from injury for the Tigers. He's been a very welcomed addition because he brings a lot of leadership and he brings a lot of offense. And he brings some height. He does bring some height. He doesn't have the, the, the weight to him or the, the muscle to him, but he is a very good post player. So I think it's kind of... It's deceiving almost when he backs up. You don't think he's going to really score on you with his uh, physique, but he'll turn around and hit a jumper on you. Both teams getting out and doing their handshakes, and we are all set to roll here. Mullen G. Ruble Arena. We see Dre going out. He'll be jumping against Eric Schlark. And the tip is up, and the Griffins will have the ball. It'll be taken in here by Chris McCann. It'll be guarded instantly by Dre. Tigers starting off in a zone defense. They're going to try to work it around. They go into the corner. They're going to give it back to McCann. He's going to try driving. He's going to kick it outside. They're going to go baseline. They kick it back out. A pump fake. They just move it again. McCann now into the corner. They're not finding a shot yet, and they have five seconds to go on the shot clock. There's a three-pointer. It's up. No good. The rebound and put back by James Wiggins. And that's one of the dangers there of that zone defense is nobody in position to really get the defensive rebound. Elijah Johnson bringing the ball up, putting on a dribbling clinic here as he's being guarded by Wiggins. He gives it off to Rebel. Neubauer moving to his right now. He's going to pass it off to Butler. He's backing down. Butler's going to go to the paint. He's going to put up a jumper off the glass. No good. Offensive rebound coming down with the big Australian Rebel and on the putback, he's fouled, so he will go to line and shoot two. And that's going to be against Eric Shark. And Kent, last season we did a lot of broadcasting of Mount Pleasant High School boys basketball, and we had the uh, privilege of calling a lot of Tom O'Connor games. And I think Austin Rebel and Tom O'Connor have very similar play styles. They're both big Australians, and uh, they're both very good on defense and getting rebounds. Hopefully that's going to be the case tonight. He missed his first free throw, and now settling in. Here's the second. It's up, and it's good. One for two on that trip, and it's now a 2-1 game. Griffin's in front. Fon Fon is facing now a full court trap here coming from the Tigers, and that's going to come back to harm him here as there's a bucket and the score. And that time it was Eric Shark getting the ball, then he was fouled by Austin Rebel, so he'll go to the line for an and one opportunity. 
officials kind of discussing with Rebel what led to the foul call. Shark settles in. Here is the free throw. In and out, no good. So it's a three-point game, four to one. Here comes a full court pass. Elijah Johnson goes up into the paint, and he's fouled. That was a heads-up play there by Brock Butler to get the rebound and then quickly see he had a man flying down the court. So now Elijah Johnson will go to line and shoot two. Shark has two fouls already. So he might be heading to the bench already. Yep, they have someone waiting in the wings. It looks like it's going to be Preston Wubker. Yep, and there's the switch. And Elijah hits his first free throw. Elijah is senior. And I like mentioning his hometown, Ken, because it's fun to say Rancho Cucamonga. There is a town of that name, huh? <laughs> I know, when you hear it, you think it's almost like a cartoon town or something, but he's a native of Southern California. So now it's a 4-3 to three game. Here come the Griffins. They're going to go inside. There's a nice score that time for Thomas Ritter. Sidesteps his way into the baseline for the score. It's now 6-3. to three. Butler bringing the ball up. He moves to his right. He's going to go into the paint. He loses the handle, and they say traveling. So a turnover here for the Tigers. Right now, the Tigers are down by three, six to three here in the early stages of the first half. Tigers wearing their new alternate gray jerseys with the purple trim. Bonbon wearing their purple jerseys with the white trim. There's a pass into the paint, knocked away by Butler, and they say last touch there. By number 12, that's Noah Coddington, who was actually checking in for a shark just moments ago. Butler bringing the ball up. He's at the top of the key. He's dribbling. He's going to look for some help. He's going inside for Rebel. Rebel gets the pass. He had the lane, just can't get it to go in. And now Fonfon on the fast break. They're going to go underneath. Coddington, he's going to go underneath. And there's McCann wide open for the score. 8-3. to three. Griffin lead. Butler has the score. He's moving to his right. He's going to take a three-pointer. Straight up. Gets it to go. Brock Butler brings it within two. Eight to six. Here comes Coddington, and he will dunk on the fast break. And that was a vicious dunk there from the young Griffin, and it's now ten to six. Jake Neubauer loses the handle. He's going to regain composure, though. He's going right into the paint. He passes it. He gives it off to Dre. Dre's backing down. He goes up in his foul that time by Coddington. And, man, that was a physical play for Neubauer. He looked like he had a collision after he made the pass, but he's able to pop back up. Neubauer had an incredible game on Saturday when they were playing the Blue Jays from Westminster College. He had 20 points. It was arguably his best offensive game as a Tiger. First free throw is no good for Dre here. Trying to make a one-for-two trip. As a team, the Tigers shoot. 69.2% on free throws and a rare 0 for 2 trip here for Mitch Dre. Dre, usually a reliable free throw shooter. Still a four point game, 10 to 6. Connington gets it in the paint. They're going to move it around outside to McCann. He's going to drive in. He's trapped. He's going to pass it out and he's able to find a teammate. Griffins working around the line. They're going to move around the arch. The zone defense right now is stifling here for the Tigers. There's a three pointer off the mark. Rebounded by Neubauer. He's going to keep on to the ball, and he will get it past half court, playing the point. He's going right into the paint. Neubauer to the basket. Gets it to fall. It hung on the rim there. And what a tough shot there, but he's able to go down for the former Clear Creek Amana Clipper. It's now a two-point game, 10-8. to eight. There's a floater in the lane by McCann. No good. Rebounded by Rebel. He gives it off to Butler, who gets it past half court. He's going to go underneath. This is baseline. Dre backing down. Post move. He goes up. Puts up the shot. No good. The rebound is going to be taken in by Fontbon. Griffins have it. It's going to be tipped that time in the passing lane by Brock Butler. Rebel gives it to Butler. He's underneath. Gets the bucket. He forces a turnover, and then he gets the score. Brock Butler has his tied up at 10 points apiece. That was a two-man play there, first by Butler to get a hand on the ball, then by Rebel to get the possession and then score it. There's a quick play for Fontbon getting an underneath score with Connington, and it's now 12 to 10. Butler takes it around midcourt. He's going to go underneath, and there's a wide open Austin Rebel, and that was an easy pass there for Butler. It's hard to miss the big man underneath, especially when nobody's guarding him. 
Griffin's going to kick it outside. There's Ritter. That's a three-pointer. That's good. Ritter hits the three, and now it's a 15-12 Fonfon lead. Neubauer is going underneath, and he has a pass through the legs of the defender, finds Mitch Dre, who goes in for the score. Highlight after highlight early in this one, Kent. And yeah. now we're going to have a timeout taken on the court. And I can't, it's going to be a quick timeout, so we'll take a quick one with them. We'll be right back here on KILJ. Griffin's lead, 15-14. Mount Pleasant Electric can provide a full range of services, including construction for commercial, residential, agricultural, and industrial. They're the largest electrical contractor in Mount Pleasant. Their focus is on Mount Pleasant. They are proud to have been involved with so many community projects. Large projects or small, whatever your electrical projects are, they can make it happen with their experience and care. Mount Pleasant Electric, providing a full range of services with quality customer care. Learn more about the company at Mount Pleasant Electric Welcome back, folks. Oh, there we go. Welcome back. We're here in Olin G. Rubel Arena. Kayla Went and Kent Bennett here on KILJ Radio, KILJ.com, and IWTigers.com. Both teams shooting well. Fontbonne 7 out of 10, Wesleyan 5 out of 10. And there's a miss by Fontbonne and rebounded coming down with Brock Butler. Butler, not one of the tallest players on the Tigers, but he's been one of the most tenacious rebounders this year. And there's a nice score for Jared Fernandez, who's checked into the game, and he gives the Tigers the lead. It's now 16-15. Austin Banks comes up with a steal. He gets it back from Fernandez, slows things down, gives it to Butler. Three-point shot off the mark, rebounded by Banks. Banks and Fernandez have both checked in. Your five on the court, Brock Butler, Austin Banks, Elijah Johnson, Jared Fernandez, and Austin Rebel. Fernandez has it. He's going in. He's going to kick it out. They're going to move it around to Johnson, who shoots a three, and he finds the bottom of the net. Big time shot, Elijah Johnson. It's now 19-15. Tigers out in front. Fonfon goes cross court. They're trying to find any sort of shot to keep up with the Tigers' hot shooting. They're going to go underneath and kick it out now for a three-point shot. There's a wide-open shooter. No good. Rebounded again by Butler. They give it to Banks on the right side. He's got speed. He's going up. He's fouled hard, and he takes a stumble into the backdrop. Austin Banks is a very tough player. He's also very fast. He plays on the football team here at Wesleyan as well, and he's a defensive back, so you know he's he's got the burners on him. And he's going to go to the line and shoot a pair of free throws now. Banks out of Apopka, Florida. First shot, no good. Free throw shooting has been the Achilles heel so far for the Tigers. We've seen a couple over two trips, and Banks is trying to kick that trend. And he's unable to. An over two trip for Austin Banks. Four point game, 19 to 15. And there's going to be a steal, and that's going to be oh no, it's not going to be taken away. Wow, what a pass there from Wiggins. He had it tipped out. Here's the steal. Banks has it. He's going up. He does a reverse layup. No good. The putback, no good for Butler. And the rebound will be taken down with Fontbonne, so a golden opportunity there for the Tigers, unable to score. And there's a nice pass from Connington. He found a cutting James Wiggins to the hoop for a score. Now a two-point game, 19-17. Tigers out in front. Butler playing the point guard position here. He's going to get the screen. He passes it over to Banks. Banks. Backing down, gives it off to Fernandez. He's going to drive in, gives it to Rebel. Rebel back to Fernandez. He's under the basket, gets the bucket and the score. And they're going to say he was also fouled. So we have an and one opportunity coming here. And we're going to have some substitutions coming for the Tigers. Jake Neubauer will take the spot of Elijah Johnson. And Mitch Dre will take Austin Rebel's place. Right now we're waiting for Jared Fernandez to shoot Another free throw. Several Australians on the roster this year. We have Fernandez out of Rozell, Australia, and Austin Rebel out of Bezendine, Australia. And there's a rebound that time for Brock Butler, but he can't get the baseline jumper to fall. Again, free throws have been the biggest weakness so far, but the Tigers still lead 21 to 17. Griffins go baseline. He's backing down on Fernandez. He's going to look to shoot. It's up, and he has the touch. That score that time from Logan Kelly-Wolf. 
And now it's a two-point game, 21 to 19. We have just under 13 minutes left to play here in the first half. Still plenty of time between these two teams. They go underneath here, baseline for Mitch Trey. He's gonna back down, kick it outside. Neubauer shoots a three-pointer, it's off the mark. The rebound will be taken in by Fontbon. They're gonna move it quickly up the court. Now they're gonna set up for their half-court offense. Moving it around the arch right now. Tiger's still on his zone defense. Oh no, now it looks like they're in the man. Spinning into the paint. There's the shot, no good. And missing that time for Jared Woodcock. And Austin Banks has it. He's gonna bring it underneath. Dre, outside for Neubauer. Over to Butler, three-pointer. It's up and it's good. Butler, from the top of the key, drains the three-pointer. It's now 24 to 19. And there's going to be a ball. That's a turnover. It went right through the hands and the feet of Logan Kelly Wolf. And that's a turnover for the Griffins. And that's their fifth turnover so far in this game. They have 11 minutes and 44 seconds left to go until halftime. And during halftime, we will have the women's head coach, Jack Bruns, on. And he will discuss their game against the Griffins. They lost a close one, 56-44. There's a three-pointer by Mitch Dre. No good. Rebounded here by the Griffins. They work it around the top of the arch. They go over to Logan Kelly Wolf. He's gonna need some help. He goes into the corner. Woodcock has it. He's guarded by Neubauer and he goes over to McKinn. He's gonna pump fake. He goes right into the paint, draws the contact. That was a good move there. He had a nice pump fake to separate himself from Brock Butler. And then you got Fernandez to jump early and that's what led to the foul. So now Everybody wants to be a shot blocker. Pretty much. Nobody wants to take the charge. There's nothing electric or appealing about being the guy that takes the charge. Four to five times you'll be called for the foul. McCann waiting for his first free throw. It's up and it's good. As a team, the Griffins shoot 69.2% on their free throws. Right now, it's a four-point game, 24-20. We have just over 11 minutes left here in the first half. There's the second free throw. Up, no good. The rebound will be coming down. That's with the Griffins. And putting it back is McCann, and he can't get it to go, but the Griffins, again, get an offensive rebound. And there's a foul called. This will be against Austin Banks. And now we have Cameron Mack checking into the game. Mack is another player that's been getting more and more playing time as the season goes on. He takes the place of Jared Fernandez. We're waiting for the inbound here and the officials are having a discussion at the scores table about a call here. I think it was pretty open and shut case. They said it was Austin Banks and they know the time. Maybe that's what they were adjusting was the Game time. The inbound will be thrown in and it's taken in here by Tristan Baker. Over to McCann, back to Baker. Now to Ritter on the left side. Tigers have gone back to that zone defense. They're gonna work it underneath. There's the three pointer by McCann. He's off the mark and the rebound will be taken in. So rebounding is now causing all sorts of problems for the Tigers. This is about the fourth opportunity that the Griffins have had. Logan Kelly Wolf is going to kick it outside. Ritter shoots a three. It's up. It's no good. And another offensive rebound coming from McCann. He puts it back in. And they finally score. And it's now a two point game 24 to 22. Ken, I don't know if it's the zone that they're running, but they just don't seem to be in the right spot to get those rebounds. No, they don't look for people when they're zoned. And there's a three pointer for Cameron Mack. He gets it to fall one of the first three-point attempts we've seen from him here in Olin G. Rubel Arena, and it's now 27 to 22. McCann's going right into the paint, no good. Mackey is able to get the rebound, and he will pass it off here. He gives it to Butler, and Mitch Dre is down. He got hit in the face with an elbow, and now Neubauer will go underneath. He gives it to Mack. He puts up a shot, and he's fouled. Gets it to bank in off the glass, so an and one opportunity for Cameron Mack. Mack, age. Sophomore guard out of Cahoka, Missouri. 
And now I think Coach Huesman wants to check in there with Mitch Dre. He did take a, a shot. So now we're waiting on Cameron Mack, see if he can hit his and one free throw. It's up and no good. Kent, there's a lid on the basket, but it's only on free throws, so it's very strange. Well, they're three out of 10 from the line right now. Yeah, 30% is not, it's well below their average. Here comes the three-pointer, that's off the mark. Rebound coming down with Butler. He'll throw a full court pass, that's the Mitch Dre. He goes up and he gets the bucket. Another full court pass there for Brock Butler. 31 to 22, Tigers out in front. Nine minutes to go till halftime. There's a shot that will fall for Baker. Now it's 31 to 24. Banks gives it to Neubauer. He pump fakes. He passes, but we have a foul called, and this will be against Chris McCann. Now we have substitutions coming in. Elijah Johnson and Austin Rebel will take the place of Brock Butler and of Austin Banks. That was a late substitution there. I don't think Banks knew he was coming out. Newbauer settles in. Here is the free throw. Tiger's already in the bonus. He misses the free throw. Almost gets the steal. And there's a foul. That will be against Elijah Johnson. Knocked down his counterpart there and Thomas Ritter. Tigers have four fouls here so far in the first half. The Griffins have seven. You know, if they could hit their free throws, they'd have a comfortable lead right now. They would. And I have to imagine the next couple practices, that's going to be an emphasis for Coach Huseman. Coddington has on the outside. Goes underneath to McCann, who gets fouled by Neubauer. So now Chris McCann, who's been all over the court. He's not even the tallest player. He's one of the shorter ones coming in at 5'7". But he has continually found a way to attack the basket. He's causing some havoc for the Tiger defense. McCann's first free throw is up, and it's good. 31-25 our score, just about eight minutes and 50 seconds left to play until we hit halftime. Coach Bruns will come over, and we'll discuss the women's game from earlier. Second shot's up, no good. Rebound will be tipped around, but Cameron Mack will haul it in. And Neubauer almost loses the handle there. He's somehow able to pick it up. Johnson goes underneath. Rebel gets the ball. He puts it up off the glass. Now 33 to 25. Nice score there for the big Aussie. Baker has it. He goes underneath. McCann outside for Ritter. Pump fakes. Gives it back to McCann. They move it around the top of the key. Coddington's driving in, but he's not going to have much room there against Austin Rebel. And he puts up a wild shot. And now we're going to have a foul called, and I think this one's going uh, against the Griffins, and I think it's against Jared Woodcock. It is, and that's his first of the game. And since the Tigers are in the bonus, they will send, I think it might be Mitch Dre to the line. It is. You have five on the court right now. Jake Neubauer, Austin Rebel, Elijah Johnson, Cameron Mack, and Mitch Dre, who is now shooting free throws. Here's the first shot. No good. And the rebound's going to come down, though, with Cameron Mack. He has been all over the boards tonight. So Neubauer will have it, and he will get a screen. He gives it off to Rebel. He hands it right off to Mack. He's going to take it around the key. Going underneath again. Here's Rebel. The big man's fighting. He goes up. The ball bounces around, can't get it to go, and now a foul called. And I think this one's going to be against Cameron Mack. It's actually going to be against Austin Rebel, and that will be Rebel's second of the game. Right now we have 7 minutes and 57 seconds left to play here until halftime. Tigers are holding on to a 33-25 to lead. Right now they're putting some full-court pressure here on... The Griffins, and there's a wide open three pointer, and that's a travel call against Luke DeLine. That's an easy turnover. He, Tigers really didn't have to pressure him that much. He had too much momentum there on his pump fake. 
Neubauer has the ball. He gets past half court, gets a screen from Rebel. He's going to go into the paint. He gives it out to Dre, who's backing down. Post move. He's spinning. He's going up to the basket. He puts up a nice shot with the softest of touches. He gets it to fall, and that's a nice shot there for the senior Dre, and it's now 35 to 25. Right now, Fonfon gives it to Baker. He's into the paint, and he puts up a wild shot, but it somehow falls. Tigers will inbound, still up 35 to 27. They have a couple men waiting to check in. Neubauer is going to kick it out for Johnson. He gets a screen. He shoots a three-pointer with a man in his face. He drains it. 38-27, our score. Elijah has been known to do that from time to time. It doesn't matter if you're pressuring him tightly or not on the perimeter. He can hit one, and he'll hit it from deep. Right now, underneath, there's... A nice turnaround jumper. That's Thomas Ritter in the paint. He cuts it down to 38 to 29. Neubauer brings the ball up. Six and a half minutes left till halftime. They give it to Dre. He's baseline. He's backing down again. He's got the advantage he wants. He's going into the paint with a lot of contact. No good. Ball will be tipped around, but it will be taken in. And there's going to be a turnover. And that time it was Luke DeLine who tripped up and lost the control. Mack will charge in, and he was fouled. And I think Coach Thornhill wants an explanation. The line did take a stumble and fall on the ground. I don't think it was due to any player contact. So now we're going to see Cameron Mack shoot some free throws. He missed his earlier and one opportunity. Makes that one, so it's now a 10-point game, 39-29. to 29. Mack has six points. Jared Fernandez will check in here, taking the place of Austin Rebel. And Brock Butler is waiting to take the place of Cameron Mack. Shots up and good. Mack will check out. Butler will check in. So right now it's Neubauer, Butler, Fernandez, Johnson, and Dre. It's not one of their biggest or their taller lineups, but it is one of their better offensive lineups. Pretty much everybody here can shoot pretty well and... It's going to be interesting to see who's going to be the rebounding effect here. Most likely going to be Butler. Griffins have the ball. They trail 40 to 29. Six minutes left until halftime. They give it to Baker at the top of the key. He drives in. Kicks it out to Ritter in the corner. He's guarded by Neubauer. That ball is going to be tipped, and that's a steal for Neubauer. And he just jumped up in the air, tipped it to himself, and he gets the steal. Neubauer has been a tremendous player this year for the Tigers. Butler's going to go underneath. There's Fernandez. He goes up strong. No good. Rebounded here by Fonfon. And that ball's going to be taken away. Elijah Johnson cutting into the passing lane. Goes underneath. There's Fernandez. He goes up and is fouled. And that foul will be going against Thomas Ritter. So Jared Fernandez will go to line and shoot two. That's the first foul against Ritter. Wesleyan's already going to shoot their 16th free throw of the first half. And he misses that one. He airballed it. What's their percentage right now on free throws? Last we checked in, it was 3 of 10. And the second one is good. It bangs it around there, and it finally bangs off the back of the backboard, but it goes in. So now 41 to 29. Austin Banks has checked into the ball game. He takes the place of Jared Fernandez. Right now the Griffins are looking to inbound. They give it in and they let James Wiggins bring it up. They give it to McCann. He's guarded by Banks. Banks is probably one of the faster players on the court that can keep up with him. He has it around midcourt. He gives it off here. Now it's the line. He's guarded by Neubauer. He goes over, and this will be the Woodcock. Now it outside with McCann. Underneath, that's Logan Kelly Wolf, and he's able to score. And he's one of the bigger players, so it's going to take some, maybe some double teaming from the Tigers to really keep him in check. Right now, 41 31. Five minutes left to go until halftime. Austin Banks has it. He drives in. He kicks it out. Johnson shoots a three. 
and he's on the mark again. Elijah Johnson has been shooting lights out, and that's his third three, and he has 11 points now, and it's now 44 to 31. Going into the paint, there's the line, no good, but rebounded and put back that time by Eric Shark. And now it's back to an 11-point game, 44 to 33. Butler bringing the ball forward. He passes it off to Dre, who's guard at the top of the arc. He gives it back to Butler, three-pointer. Can't get it to fall. Thought he had the edge there on his man, but he can't hit the mark. Into the corner of the line. That ball's going to be tipped by Dre. It's going to be saved, though, by the Griffins. They go into the corner. Underneath now, there's Wiggins. He puts up a shot. No good. Logan Kelly Wolf gets the ball, puts it back. And now the height difference with, or no, that was actually Eric Shark getting it back. Shark has come back into the game, and he's made his presence known. He has eight points for the Griffins. 44 to 35, and Shark commits his third foul. He might have to go back to the bench. And Mitch Dre will be shooting some free throws. And Kent, that's not a good foul. He wasn't in the act of shooting. He was just getting a simple pass there at the top of the key, and he wasn't even looking at the basket. There was really no reason to foul there. No, there sure wasn't, but he did. First free throw is up, and good. So now it's 45 to 35, and coming back into the game is Noah Coddington taking the place of Eric Shark. Second free throw is up. And good, two for two on that chip for Mitch Dre. And he has the lead back to 11. Driving in, Wiggins, he goes up to the hole and he scores the bucket. That was a tough shot. It's now 46 to 37. We have just under four minutes left until halftime. Banks has the ball. He passes it off to Butler. He's picked up by Connington. He goes over to the corner. There's Mitch Dre for a three-pointer. He's on the mark. And Mitch Dre with the three-pointer. It's raining threes here in Olin G. Rubel Arena. He has 11 points as well. It's now 49 to 37. Griffins underneath to Connington. He puts up a shot. He gets it to go. So some quick retaliation from Fontbonne. It's now a 10-point game, 49-39. Banks to Neubauer, back to Dre. He's going to drive in. He kicks it out. That's Neubauer, three-point shots up, and no good. But the rebound will be tipped out and taken in by the Tigers. Banks to Dre. Back to Banks. He's going to go into the corner. Elijah Johnson's open. He shoots the three. Oh, in and out. Rebounded by Neubauer. He gives it off to Dre. He's going to be backing down. He gets out to around the top of the key. He has a hole. He's going to go up. The ball's taken out. He's able to save it. And now he'll have it ripped from him. Some incredible defense here on this game. And there's McCann flying down the court for the score. It's now 49 to 41. McCann has eight points here in the first half. Butler has it. He gives it off to Dre, who's able to keep the handle on it. He hands it off to Elijah Johnson. Back to Butler on the left side. Now to Neubauer, to Johnson, or no, that's to Banks, who goes into the paint, kicks it out for Butler. He shoots, he scores a corner three, and it's now 52 to 41. Two minutes left until halftime. Both teams, kind of like a boxing match, just throwing haymakers right now. And there's a hook shot, that will fall. That was a good shot there for Jared Woodcock. And it's now 52 to 43. There's another three-pointer, that time for Johnson, no good. Rebounded by Fonfon. And then a mental error there, and that ball somehow saved, though. And the Tigers, if they were looking, they probably could have had another point there. Griffins go underneath, that's to Woodcock. He's guarded now by Johnson. He's trying to push out, and he will have the ball taken away. Banks with the quick hands, he finds Neubauer. He's going to go into the hole. He's going to go up, kick it outside. He has the ball taken away by McCann. He's on a fast break. Griffin's flying. And the ball's up, and he's fouled. And that one against Elijah Johnson. That'll be Johnson's second of the game. Right now for the Tigers, they have three players with 11 points. Brock Butler, Elijah Johnson, and Mitch Dre. And all three are also the tied for leading score in the game. Leading score for Fontbonne is Chris McCann, who has eight points, but he has two free throws coming right here. First shot's up. No good. See if he can make it a one for two trip. We have 80 seconds left until halftime. 
And Coach Bruns will come and join us here on our halftime show. Second shot's up and good. And I think we're going to have a timeout taken. We do. It's currently 52 to 44. And a timeout taken on the court. We'll take one with them. We'll be right back here on KILJ Radio. Tigers out in front. When the summer's heat is sweltering or the winter's cold is freezing, you want to make sure that your home can handle it all. And that's where CNM Cooling, Heating, and Plumbing comes in. Their staff has professionals with the expertise to ensure that your current system is running at its full ability and can fix any problems or issues you may have. CNM is a trusted local business that demonstrates their commitment to their customers time and time again. They make sure that you and your family are comfortable no matter what kind of weather Mother Nature brings. Call CNM Cooling, Heating, and Plumbing today at 319-385-4125. Welcome back, Tiger fans. Kayla Witt, Kent Bennett up here on the track in Olin G. Rubel Arena looking down on a great first half here for the Tigers. They scored 52 points, and we still have 70 seconds left to play. Austin Banks flying down the court, gives it off to Dre, who's able to stop just shy of falling out of bounds. Pass off to Neubauer, over to Johnson on the left side. Johnson gives it out to Neubauer, who gets it right back. Now Dre will have it, and they're going to move it around. There's the three-pointer that time by Johnson with a man in his face. No good. There was no one open, and the shot clock was winding down, so he just had to put one up. And there's a turnover, Fontbon, and that time Coddington was trying to set up himself on the baseline, but he... Missed the pass there, and that's the 11th turnover for the Griffins. Neubauer has the ball. He gets a pass half court. He's going to give it off to Dre. He goes into the corner with Butler. Butler shoots the three, and it's good. Butler with the quick release strikes again, 55 to 44. 14 points for Brock Butler. Griffins trying to retaliate. 20 seconds left to go here on the game clock. The shot clock, there's only probably a split second difference between the two. They pass it to the outside. It's Coddington. He's going to give it to back to McCann. Butler over, jumped on the lane there. The missed shot, though, and the putback is no good. And then it's going to be tipped out by Coddington, but they say he was stepping out of bounds. So with one second left in the half, the Tigers will have the ball. Can't imagine they're going to get a good shot off. They're probably just going to get a full court. Butler will heave it. Oh, and it was just a little too far to left there. But it had the distance. It looked like it was on the mark. So we've played one half of basketball here, and the Tigers are winning by 11, 55 to 44. And we're going to take a break, and we'll be back. We'll have the numbers from Kent, and then after that we'll have Coach Bruns up here, and uh, we'll be discussing some Tiger basketball again. And they defeated, or they were defeated earlier, 56 to 54 in the women's game. We'll be right back from Olin G. Rubel Arena after these messages on KILJ. A monument is the chance to leave a lasting tribute to a loved one. You know that the Murphy Funeral Home can help you plan a funeral, but they are also proud to offer monument sales as well. When a loved one dies, honor them with a quality, lasting piece. From rough granite to set up, they can make your dream a reality. Custom orders are available, and they are locally represented to handle all of your needs. Leave a lasting, loving tribute. Learn more at BeattyMurphyFH.com. The Murphy Funeral Home of Mount Pleasant. Services with dignity, compassion, honesty, and affordability. Welcome back, fans. Kayler Went, Kent Bennett up here in Olin G. Rubel Arena, and we're at halftime. It's been a quick half, and the Tigers are leading 55-44. to 44. And, Kent, this has been a very quick half. I see you're constantly writing down here, trying to keep pace. What do the numbers tell you? Well, the numbers tell us that we've got an 11-point lead, and it's looking good, a good first half by the Tigers. And the scoring has been really well divided. 14 points for Brock Butler, 11 points apiece for Elijah Johnson and Mitch Dre, 7 points for Cameron Mack, 5 points for Jared Fernandez, Five points for Austin Rebel and a basket for Jake Neubauer. And for the Griffins from Fonbon, their leading scorer at the break is Chris McCann, who has nine points. And all in all, Taylor, if the Tigers hit their free throws, and from the free throw line in the first half, they were eight out of 18. They hit five or six more of those. They got a really comfortable lead <laughs> at the break. I have to imagine that's going to be the number one 
issue that Coach Hughes is going to bring up to his team. And Kent's going to take the headset off, and we're going to have Coach Bruns coming over. And the Tigers, next game, they will have a conference doubleheader on Saturday. They travel to Eureka, Illinois, to play the Red Devils of Eureka College. And that's going to be a doubleheader at 1 p.m. And should be a good one. The Red Devils have uh, conference leaders in both men's and women's basketball. And now we're joined now by Coach Jack Bruns of the Iowa Wesleyan women's team is joining us here on KILJ Radio. And, uh, Coach, I want to start off. I heard your team's a little bit sick. How are you feeling? Um, a little bit better now. Um, Monday was a, a rough day for me. Um, flu bug was just going around. Um, a lot of our athletes, uh, some of our administrators have had it this week. So um, feeling a little bit better now. Um, but, yeah, it's been a rough couple days for our team. So every practice, I probably imagine, ends with orange juice and cold medicine. Yeah, it's, it's funny. Uh, the last two days we've had a lot of hand sanitizer at practice. So, um, you know, we get water breaks and, and doing our best to try to get ourselves healthy. But, um, yeah, it's been tough. Uh, well, let's talk about this game. Even though your team was a little bit under the weather, they went down to the wire. Uh, the final score was 56 to 54. It really came down to free throws at the end there. Yeah, you know, we missed a couple free throws at the end. Um, but, you know, I was telling our girls after the game, it's not about those. Um, we shouldn't have put ourselves in a position to be there. Um, you know, kudos to, to Fontbonne. They're a very well-coached basketball team. Um, you know, early in that, that third period, um, had a couple offensive rebounds we gave up, um, just some extra possessions that we had. Didn't knock down some shots that we, we normally knock down. So um, the free throws are tough at the end, but really, you know, we shouldn't put ourselves in that position. And your team, a little short staff, like we said, with the illness. How do you think they played tonight despite all that adversity? Yeah, you know, um, Hunter Clark, she's out for a couple weeks too. Um, she's got a knee injury. Uh, we're kind of banged up, as is every team right now. Um, and, you know, with the, the flu, I think we had three or four girls the last couple of days that um, have been sick. So, um, you know, the way they came out tonight and every single game when the chips are stacked against them, they just they battle. Um, and there's, you know, as a coach, there's nothing you can be more proud of. Um, just being aggressive and you know they stay together and they they battle the whole time so that's an easy group to coach and we're looking at Darby Masner she had 16 points but I think more impressive she had 11 rebounds that was a great performance yeah you know we've last couple games we've played a little bit more uh, two three zone um, really has been looking good for us and, and really preaching you know rebounding out of that zone um, been working really hard with Darby on on rebounding um, from that bottom side or even when she's playing the top of that zone um, she's a fantastic rebounder. She just has a natural instinct for the ball. She's had a couple double-doubles this year with rebounds, so um, she's just doing what she does. I like to compare. I think her and Brock Butler, they've made the same strides as players. They both were sharpshooters. This year, they both made a, a more of a conscious effort to go inside and score more, and they're both, like, really good rebounders this year. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I think, you know, they're deceptively athletic, I think. Yes. Um, you know, Darby, uh, you know, she jumps well. She's got a great knack for the ball. Um, so, yeah, they, they are great shooters. Um, but, yeah, just being, you know, aggressive offensively, and it puts them in a good position to rebound. And you had a four-way tie for assists with Darby Masner, Leah Ty, Allie Masner, and Josie Zerusen. As a coach, you have to like seeing that the ball is getting spread around a lot. Yeah, you know, um, the, the assists are always fantastic. Um, it's a lot easier to score off an assisted, you know, basket than unassisted, obviously. Um, but the turnovers, I think, are something that we've been working on and um, really cut those down tonight, too. So when you have a positive assisted turnover ratio, uh, typically you're going to put yourself in a pretty good spot to win. The first quarter, you scored 26 points, arguably your best offensive quarter of the season. Second quarter, you had 12 points, but then the third, you only had three. What was the difference there? Yeah, you know, I not to make, you know, all sorts of different excuses. I think we just ran out of gas. Um, you know, we came out, we, you know, I thought our, our scheme was going to be good uh, defensively. Um, you know, they hit a couple shots early. Basketball is a game of runs. Um, but down at the other end, they kind of switched it up, played a little bit different zone look on us. Um, and I, a lot of our jumpers were good looks. They were just short. So a uh, little bit's that, a little bit, you know, maybe could have put our team in a little bit, you know, better position to score. But um, I think that was a big part. And the Master Sisters both played 40 minutes. They played the whole game. That's yeah. a... That's quite an accomplishment, especially from the same family. Right, yeah. I mean, Darby's done that quite a few times this year, and that's just something she knew she was going to have to do. Um, you know, she's a great player for us and a strong leader on the court. Um, and Allie, is, she is always prepared to do whatever we ask of her. Uh, tonight it was play big minutes, be offensively aggressive, and, um, you know, that's what she does. They're, they're fantastic players to coach. What are the differences you see between Darby and Allie on the court? Yeah, you know, you kind of mentioned, you know, Darby is pretty prolific um, from the three-point line. Allie, for sure, is a, is a threat from three. Um, 
Ali is, is very aggressive going to the rim. I love when she attacks to the middle. Um, she can kind of finish, draw some fouls. Um, and, you know, in high school, she was a forward. So I think that really helps her translate being a more physical guard. And when we spoke at the beginning of the year when you just took over, we said you had to get to know this roster and really get to know their strengths and weaknesses. How do you feel uh, you've done that so far? You're 14 games in your first season. Yeah, you know, I, there's a lot of ups and downs, um, you know, especially being my first year as a head coach, first year in the women's side of things. You know, it was going to take some time for them to get to know me, me to kind of get to know them and their playing style. But, um, you know, we've meshed really, really well. I love coaching this group. Um, you know, there are a few things I wish I could, you know, redo and start over offensively, some sets and schemes that were are good now. Um, but, you know, the other piece is, you know, we're kind of all learning together. And, um, you know, I think I'm so positive going forward. You know, where we are now versus a month ago, um, we're a totally different team. I would say that same thing. And I think scheduling is a big part of here. I was looking at the schedule. I think this past weekend and then this game, it's only two consecutive home games you have all year. That's a pretty tough uh, obstacle to overcome. Yeah, I, I think we only have nine home games all year, um, yeah. which is it's tough. You know, you always play pretty good at home. It's, yes. a, it's a good feeling. It's a good environment. Um, those road games are tough, especially in our conference, a lot of travel. But um, we, we've been traveling pretty well, too, so I'm excited for Saturday. It's a big game at Eureka, and I, I'm looking forward to it. What do you know about the Red Devils? Yeah, they're uh, a fantastic team. Um, right now, they're second in conference. Uh, won it last year outright. Um, they have a fantastic perimeter offense. Um, defensively, they're very scrappy as well. So it's going to be a huge challenge for us, especially on the road. Um, you know, they always have great environments for their games, too. So, um, you know, we're going to talk about it and prep for it, and it's going to be a, a big challenge for us. But like I said, I'm excited for it. I think the girls are ready for it. Um, so we're ready to go take on, you know, anybody's challenges. And we're talking about the home court advantage. The last two home games you've had, the student section's been gone because they're all home for <laughs> Christmas break. Right. Uh, so out of the nine home games you get, two of them, you have no student section. Uh, so you're going to be really welcoming or waiting for them to come back, aren't Absolutely. you? Absolutely. <laughs> we're, we're so excited for that energy to come back. Um, special shout out to the men's soccer team. They are wild at home games. So we're looking forward to having them back for sure. But um, the community support that we've had this year has been fantastic at our home games. Um, we don't always sell the gym out, but people are loud and they're encouraging. So um, our girls definitely feed off that. And moving forward, looking at the rest of the season, what's your number one goal or what's the, the goal of the team going forward? Yeah, I mean, still what we started out preseason. Um, we still want to finish top four in the conference. That's still, you know, on deck. Um, continuing to get better every day. You know, we preach 1%. Every day, 1% better, it's successful. So, um, you know, there's so, still some obvious strides we need to make offensively and defensively, but um, we've done some really good things, um, you know, and, and just trying to figure out how we can close games now, how to play with a win. We didn't do that first semester because we didn't have a lot of leads. Um, so how do you play with a lead and, and win a game? So, um, like I said, we're excited. We're ready to go, and, and hopefully a second semester, um, you know, brings us good fortune. And let's talk about off the court, kind of your duties. We're looking at recruiting. Like we said, uh, not a lot of depth this year, especially when you get sick, you have to go with a short lineup. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're looking now at recruiting, what are some of the things you're looking for? Yeah, you know, quite a few of our players, you know, historically have been uh, junior college transfers. So that's definitely a route that we're looking, um, trying to bring in some of that experience and maturity. Um, you know, it's just something that's invaluable with the team. Um, and then also, you know, recruiting the local area. I've been to a lot of high school games local, um, have some great connections here. So um, hopefully, you know, there's a lot of uh, talent in girls basketball in the area too. So, um, you know, we've branched out. We have a couple commits from Missouri, uh, one from Illinois. So um, really kind of hitting that, you know, three, four hour radius around uh, Mount Pleasant. So um, it's going good so far. We've got to keep it up though and, and really put together a good team for next year. In modern day recruiting, I have to imagine social media is a big part of it now. Definitely. So what do you kind of do on the social media front? Yeah, um, something that, that I haven't done a lot in the past is social media. I don't post a lot, um, but we've been pretty active on Twitter. Um, you know, Instagram is something we utilize quite a bit, too. And there's a lot of NCAA regulations on, you know, what you can like, what you can't like, that sort of thing, too. Who you can follow, whatever. That's got to be just a minefield. It is. It's <laughs> wild. It is. It really is. So, uh, but everything, that, you know, there's there's new stuff every day. And it's a great way to stay in touch and kind of follow players' stats and what they're doing. So, um, yeah, I mean, go follow us, IWWBball, or at Twitter. Um, same thing on Instagram, too. And, you know, keep up with what we're doing. And, like I said, all the social media stuff and uh, just the overall – like evolution of mm -hmm. recruiting uh, from the recruit standpoint though there's a probably a greater chance that they can find an opportunity like Iowa Wesleyan or something like that so it's kind of a cool little double-edged sword there it goes both ways it is and there's you know there's so many fantastic um, resources out there for for high school athletes that I didn't have when I was in high school even um, different websites that will help you get you know 
seen in front of players. I'm not going to get out to California and New York and see a lot yeah. of players, but um, now with these resources, I can see video and communicate with them on a daily basis. So it's, yeah, we, we love social media. We embrace it and we use it quite often. Now, I've noticed here at Iowa Wesley and international players are becoming a bigger trend. Have you ever considered looking into something down that avenue? Yeah, for sure. You know, the men's team, they have three Australians, I believe. Um, and I, I've talked to some recruiters over there, too. Um, we, we embrace our international students so well. We have such great diversity at Iowa Wesley, and it's, it's one of the things that makes us special. Um, but, yeah, it's definitely something that we're looking at. And, if, you know, we have some quality student athletes that want to come in and help us. You know, we're happy to have them on the team. Is women's basketball have a large presence in the international community, or is it kind of one of the lower sports? Um, it, it's grown leaps and bounds, um, especially with the success um, you know, of some WNBA players now that are playing overseas in the offseason. Um, Diana Taurasi was a huge influence overseas, and there's some big-name players that are um, playing overseas. So it's grown so much, too. And obviously the NBA is such a global sport. Um, that we do have quite a few players that contact us that are interested in playing overseas. So it's very interesting stuff. We're very excited to see everything you uh, do in the future, Coach. And we'd like to thank you for joining us here on our halftime show. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right, thanks. And that was Coach Bruns. And uh, they will be moving on to Saturday when they travel to Eureka to play the Red Devils. And uh, we're getting set for the second half action between Fontbonne and Iowa Wesleyan. And we had our halftime stats delivered here again. Uh, the Tigers are leading 55 to 44. Our leading scorer in the game is Brock Butler with 14 points, followed up by Elijah Johnson and Mitch Dre, who each have 11. Leading scorer for the Griffins coming in with nine points is Chris McCann, and then Eric Shark has eight, and James Wiggins has six points. And we're looking at the other stats in the games. The Tigers have actually been losing the rebounding game. Uh, the Griffins have 24 rebounds compared to only 16 for the Tigers. Is it the assist game, though, is where it kind of goes the opposite way. Tigers have 14 rebounds, while the Griffins only have seven. And the turnovers, the Tigers have li limited themselves to only three turnovers, while the Griffins have 11 total turnovers. In the steals, Griffins have only been able to swipe two balls, while the Tigers have had six steals. At the shooting stats from the floor, Fontbon shot 55%. They were 20 of 36 on their shot attempts. The three-point game, though, they shot 12.5% on the three-pointers, only one of eight. And on their free throws, they were 42.9% uh, on their charity stripe shots. And that's three of seven. The Tigers shot 51% from the floor out of 19 of 37 shot attempts. And then three-point shots, they were nine of 18 for 50%. And then their uh, free throws, again, with the Achilles heels. For both teams, uh, they were 8 of 18. So, Kent, the big difference there, even though the Tigers were losing the rebounding game by a large margin, uh, they shot 50% on three-pointers. That's a winning success right there. Yeah, it sure is. And when you make those threes, uh, the game seems so easy. And it looks like you're really playing well. And if you miss those three-pointers, it looks like you're really playing bad. But it just comes down to... Who takes the shot? And if they've got a good shot, when they take it. And it doesn't look like anybody's really forcing their three-pointers. Brock Butler, four of seven. Elijah Johnson, three of six. And Mitch Dre, one of two. And you also had Cameron Mack hitting one of one. Uh, Jake Neubauer is the only one who has taken an attempt and hasn't made it. He's 0 for two, so he's still limiting himself. Uh, but we have about uh, less than a minute to play or uh, to warm up here before the second half. We'll take one last break. We'll be right back after these messages on KILJ Radio. Mount Pleasant Electric can provide a full range of services, including construction for commercial, residential, agricultural, and industrial. They're the largest electrical contractor in Mount Pleasant. Their focus is on Mount Pleasant. They are proud to have been involved with so many community projects. Large projects or small, whatever your electrical projects are, they can make it happen with their experience and care. Mount Pleasant Electric, providing a full range of services with quality customer care. Learn more about the company at Mount Pleasant Electric Welcome back, folks. We are counting down the final 10 seconds of halftime here. Both teams are breaking huddle and will get underway again in the second half. Tigers will start off with a 55-44 to 44 lead, and they will also lead off with the ball. And Brock Butler will be doing the inbounding tomorrow morning on KILJ Radio. Right after our 9 a.m. news, you can hear Tiger Nation an in-depth look with Tiger coaches, athletic department staff, and student athletes. And tomorrow morning we are honoring our December Student Athlete of the Month, 
Brock Butler, who just inbounded to Jake Neubauer, who is immediately fouled by Chris McCann. A very aggressive there, uh, move there for McCann, and picking up an early foul before they even officially started the clock. And there's a foul coming, and that will be against the Tigers. Rebel. And that'll be on the big man, Austin Rebel, picking up his third foul. So he's already in some foul trouble. They give the inbound to McCann. He gives it over and is going to be taken up the court by Luke DeLine. He's guarded by Brock Butler trying to drive in. He gives it off to Thomas Ritter. Good switch there by the Tiger defense. Logan Kelly Powell, or Logan Kelly Wolf, excuse me, gives it outside. There's a three pointer, no good. Offensive rebound for McCann. He out jumped Austin Rebel, but he misses the putback. Butler on a fast break. He goes up strong. He's fouled, and he will now go to line and shoot two. The foul called against Thomas Ritter. And for Ritter, that's his second foul. So Butler getting ready to shoot a pair of free throws. He's already leading the game at 14 points. If he misses, we know the taboos on our free throw <laughs> shooting. Well, maybe it was on that opposite core, the opposite net down there as he hits his first because it's now 56 to 44. Tigers as a team were 8 of 18 in the first half. That's 44.4%. Hits the second, and it's now 57 to 44. Butler has 16 points. They're going to slow things down with the line, give it over to McCann. Some good ball movement right now for the Griffins. The line looking for someone. He's going to need some help. And now going baseline to McCann underneath and going up is Shark, no good. Rebound hauled in and that's going to be by Austin Rebel. Butler has it, he gives it to Neubauer, back to Butler. He gets a screen. He's looking for help, he goes to Dre, outside to Johnson. Now we're seeing some tremendous ball movement here for the Tigers. They're gonna kick it out, this is a deep three pointer. Elijah Johnson, no good, rebounded, taken in by Wiggins. He passes it into the corner. That's McCann. Back to Wiggins. They're going to work it around the arch. And now they go up top, and Wiggins is looking for some help. He gets it McCann, who's now guarded by Butler. They go around to the right side, and oh, almost a steal coming for Austin Rebel, but the Griffins are able to hold on to it. Only three seconds on the shot clock. They put up a wild shot, no good. Rebound taken in by Rebel. Full court pass, Mitch Dre has it. He goes up and he's fouled. No easy points there. And Eric Shark though picks up his fourth foul of the game. So now Dre has put Shark in some foul trouble and he will shoot some free throws. Coach Usman's having the rest of his players go to the opposite side of the court because a couple times they've been burned with someone kind of sneaking out of that side of the court and then a deep pass gets some easy points. First free throw is good. So it's now 58 to 44. Checking in for the Griffins is Noah Coddington taking the place of Shark. We also have Jared Woodcock taking the place of Thomas Ritter. Second free throw, no good. Rebounded here by the Griffins. He gives it to McCann and McCann's gonna fly down the court. He gives it to Wiggins, thought about shooting, goes underneath. They're going to move it around. Go outside again with Wiggins. Over to Coddington. Now to Baker on the right side. They're going to go outside. That's an open three-pointer. Shots up. No good. Rebound taken in that time by Dre. Neubauer gives it to the big man. Rebel. He's going to back down. He goes up. Puts up a hook shot. He gets it to fall. Nice move. And it's now 60 to 44. Big man's got seven. Seven points there for the big Australian. Or the big Aussie, as I like to call him. 16 point lead for the Tigers. Fonfon goes to the outside. There's McCann. He'll go up and he will draw the foul and he gets the bucket. So an and one opportunity coming for Chris McCann. And Kent, his nickname might have to be the Energizer Bunny because he never stops moving and he's always finding himself in good places. <laughs> he sure does. Elijah Johnson picks up that foul and that will be his third. Free throws up, no good. 
Rebound taken in by Butler. Butler's going to drive in. He's going right to the paint. Butler's going to go all the way coast to coast, but he can't get it to score. And the Griffins somehow able to come up with the rebound. It looked like it was going to go out of bounds. Saved by Tristan Baker. They go underneath. That's to Woodcock. He goes to Coddington. Passes it off to Wiggins, who's now guarded by Butler. McCann has it. Gives it right back to Wiggins. And they're kind of daring Wiggins to shoot because Butler giving him plenty of space. Coddington with the three-pointer. He nails it from the corner. It's now 60 to 49. Butler is guarded by Baker the whole length of the court. He drives past him. He gets a screen here. Butler looking for some help. He needs someone to come back, and he finds it in Neubauer. Neubauer directing traffic. Gives it to Butler, who's getting a screen from Dre. He's going to go baseline. Butler's going to go up strong, and he puts up a shot, and then no good, but the putback from Austin Rebel. Rebel coming on strong here in the second half. 62-49 our score. Wiggins has it on the outside. Goes underneath the McCann. He's backing down. He kicks it back out to Wiggins. They're going to move it around the top of the arch. They go outside of McCann, who's guarded by Neubauer. They're daring these Fonfon guards to shoot. They're giving him plenty of space. There is a foul called, and I don't like that one against Mitch Dre. He kind of tried to avoid contact there, but he picks up his first foul regardless. Now shooting will be Tristan Baker. Here's his first free throw, and it's up and good. 12-point game, 62-50. to 50. Austin Banks will now check into the ball game, taking the place of Austin Rebel. Rebel having a good start to the half with some solid rebounding and some good putbacks. Second free throw for Bakers up and good, 2-2 two two on that trip, so 62-51. to 51. Banks gives it back to Neubauer. Neubauer back to Banks. They're going to be working it around, and they have to find someone. There's going to be a turnover. Neubauer is taken away there, and that's going to be McCann with a wild layup. No good. Baker gets the offensive board and puts it back. And now a timeout taken on the court by Coach Usman. We'll take one with them. Right now, 62-53. We have 15 and a half minutes left to play. We'll be right back from Olin G. Rubel Arena. When the summer's heat is sweltering or the winter's cold is freezing, you want to make sure that your home can handle it all. And that's where CNM Cooling, Heating, and Plumbing comes in. Their staff has professionals with the expertise to ensure that your current system is running at its full ability uh, and right now, any problems or issues you may have. CNM is a trusted local business that demonstrates their commitment to their customers time and time again. They make sure that you and your family are comfortable no matter what kind of weather Mother Nature brings. Call CNM Cooling, Heating, and Plumbing today at 319-385-4125. Welcome back, fans. Kaylor Went, Kenton Bennett up here in the, the what do we call it? It's the press box. I, I forgot the name of the press box here in Olin G. Rubel Arena. I think it's the Carol Nemitz Memorial Press Box. And no, she's still alive. <laughs> well, you can still have it in her memory. Uh, but it's 62-53 with 15 and a half minutes left. Tigers were uh, on a little bit of a roll there, but the Griffins were able to plant their feet and start a little bit of a comeback. So Coach Huseman wanted to kill the momentum, and the Tigers will take the floor, and they have Neubauer, Banks, Johnson, Butler, and Dre on the court. Hey, when you're talking Carol Nimitz, Taylor, you're talking Iowa Wesleyan synonymous. It's just one <laughs> the same thing, one of the same. The other. Here comes the inbound for Neubauer. He finds Elijah Johnson. And the Griffins looking to do a little bit of a full court trap here. And Neubauer is going to be able to split it. He finds Johnson. And now they give it over to Austin Banks. Dre has it. And he's at the top of the key. Dre's going right to the hole. He's going to lay it up. He gets it to go. And that was a nice score there. And he took it all the way in. And it's now 64 to 53. McCann on the outside. They give it off to Baker. He's on the left side. He goes to Woodcock. Back to McCann. 
They go underneath and a wide open Jared Woodcock under the basket scores the easy bucket. Tiger defense lost track of him, so it's now 64 to 55. Butler has the ball. He gives it back to Banks. They have to get it past half court. They do. Banks trying to direct some traffic. He gives it to Dre. Dre will give it right back to Banks, who gets a screen. He passes it off. Now it's going to be to Butler. Butler going into the hole. Butler right to the basket. It goes around, and it will be a foul call, and this will be Tristan Baker. Heads up move there by Brock Butler, because once he got past Baker, there was a clear lane to the basket. And <laughs> Brock Butler was not ready for the bounce pass there from the official for the free throw shot, and he misses his first one there. Kind of spooked him there. He wasn't expecting it to be there already. Checking into the ball game now is Logan Kelly Wolf. Here's the second free throw. It's up and good for Butler. So it's now 65 55, and Butler has 17 points. Cameron Mack will be waiting to check in for the Tigers. And along with Austin Rebel to counteract this taller lineup for the Griffins. Right now, Wiggins has on the outside. He gives it to McCann, guarded by Neubauer. Off to Coddington, who gives it right back to Wiggins, who's at the free throw line, and he turns it over, taken away there by Mitch Dre. He was trying to find Kelly Wolf, and instead found the senior Tiger. Dre has it. He's guarded by Wolf. He's going to be going in. He kicks it back outside. That's going to be Elijah Johnson, who's fouled, and that will be James Wiggins. Wiggins picking up his second foul. So Mitch Dre will check out for, for the Tigers. And Elijah Johnson will also check out. Cameron Mack and Austin Rebel will both check in. The inbound will be a foul. Butler getting the ball, but he's fouled by Tristan Baker. Baker playing way too aggressive here. Picks up his fourth foul. He seems to be rattled, and he... <laughs> Instantly went to the bench, and Coach Thornhill said, no, you still have to stay in until I tell you to come out. Now Jared Woodcock will take his place. Neubauer with the inbound. He finds Austin Banks. Banks is going to go give it to Rebel, who shoots a jumper, and he gets it to go. Austin Rebel showing a little bit of everything. He'll get the offensive rebound, get the defensive rebound. He'll get the putback, and now he's making jump shots. Reminds me of Tom O'Connor last year for the boys. That's basketball. what we were saying earlier. They have a similar play style. Griffins have it on the outside. It's Wiggins to McCann. Now over to Coddington. He's guarded by Mack. Griffins really trying to find something here. And now we have a foul called. And Austin Banks is the culprit. And Banks will pick up his second foul. The inbound will be instantly into the corner. There's a three-pointer, and that's good for the Griffins. And that one was Wiggins just waiting for it, and it's now 67-58. to 58. Tigers still in the lead, but the Griffins are really holding their own now. Mack has the ball, and he will throw the ball into the bench, and uh, he was trying to find Neubauer, but threw it a little bit too far ahead. So mental error there by Cameron Mack, and that's a turnover for the Tigers. We have just over 12 and a half minutes left to play in the game. Connington has it on the outside. He gives it off to McCann. And we have yet to see McCann check out of this game. That guy has a motor like no one else. He shoots a three. No good. Rebound coming down for Brock Butler. He gives it off to Austin Banks. Banks running down the court. And he's going to go right to the hole. He gives it to Mack. He puts up a shot. And that one's good. Cameron Mack with a nice shot. He has nine. 69 to 58 our score. Kelly Wolf over to Coddington underneath and there's going to be a wide open Woodcock. He puts up the easy bucket after pump faking Austin Rebel. Now it's a nine point game again. 69 to 60. Bon Bon just keeps hanging around. Banks outside for Butler. He shoots a three and he's on the mark. Three pointer from the left side. Brock Butler now has 20. 72 to 60 our score. And there's Wiggins driving right to the bucket, and he gets the layup. 
And another quick strike. It makes it a 10-point ball game, 72 to 62. And they have a timeout on the court. We'll take one with them. It's a 10-point ball game, and we'll be back with more from Olin G. Rubler Arena right after these messages on KILJ. A monument is the chance to leave a lasting tribute to a loved one. You know that the Murphy Funeral Home can help you. This shot for Coddington, and the Tigers have it on the fast break. Neubauer rolling. He goes outside. Butler for a three. Oh, no good. Rebound will be taken in by Coddington. Thought for a second that the Tiger bench was about to erupt in applause because they were waiting for that one. And there's a travel call. Coddington trying to cross over. will turn the ball over. And now checking in for the first time tonight for the Griffins is Garrett Goodnight. So the Griffins have a deep roster. We were talking about before the game. They have a lot of names here. They have only played a select few. Butler with another three-pointer. He's got the hot hand. No good. And an offensive rebound coming down for Cameron Mack. He just out-jumped Chris McCann. McCann a good deal shorter than him, but he still gets the offensive board. Rebel. Going back outside for Austin Banks. Banks is going to the hole. He's going to put up a shot off the glass. Gets it to go. Nice move there. Austin Banks getting his first bucket of the night. 77 to 62. Tigers pulling ahead. They're going to go outside with Goodnight. He goes over to McCann. He's going to be backing out. Now to Connington on the right side. And the ball will go out of bounds. They say Connington last one to touch it. A uh, mental error there, and he turned it over. Thomas Ritter will check out, and James Wiggins will take his place. We have 10 minutes left to play in the ball game. We are now waiting for the clock, and yep, now we're officially 10 minutes left to play. Butler goes cross court to Mack. That was a high pass, but Mack was able to get up to go get it. They're going to move it around to Johnson around midcourt. Your five on the court right now, Brock Butler, Austin Rebel, Elijah Johnson, Austin Banks, and Cameron Mack. And Mack almost came up with another offensive rebound. Wiggins has the ball. He's hounded here, and that's going to be a steal. Cameron Mack coming out of nowhere takes it away. Butler was giving him all the attention, and then out of nowhere, Mack comes up with a steal. And now we have a turnover by Austin Banks. All that momentum just... Kind of slipped away there, and now we have some substitutions coming in for the Griffins. Tristan Baker checking in, along with Jared Woodcock. Mitch Dre will check in. He'll take Austin Rebel's place. And Baker has to be very careful because he has four fouls. And the same could be said with Eric Shark. So they have two guys in foul trouble. We'll see how they play it here. They go outside for Baker. He gives it off to Shark. He goes into the corner now with Goodnight. He's guarded closely here by Mack. He's going to give it off to McCann, who's in the paint. He puts up a wild shot off the board. No good. The offensive board is up, and then a foul coming down. Eric Shark tried to get the put back, but now he will go to the line and shoot two. That foul will be credited to Elijah Johnson, who now picks up his fourth of the game. So now we have three players all on the court who are in some serious foul trouble. Shots up and good. So it's now 77 to 63. Jake Neubauer will take Elijah Johnson's place. Waiting for Shark to attempt his second free throw. Down 77 to 63 with just over nine minutes left to play. Shots up and good. Two for two on that trip and it's now Tiger ball, and Cameron Mack with a dangerous pass, but he gives it to Butler, who gives it to Neubauer. He goes into the baseline. He goes underneath. Mitch Dre wide open, and Neubauer does the great job of a head fake pass there. Looks like he's going to shoot, and it goes right underneath to a wide open Mitch Dre. 79 to 64. Griffins working around the top of the arch. They have it with Goodnight. He's looking for help. He finds it in McCann. Neubauer's daring him to shoot. They go outside for... Woodcock back to McCann. He's going to drive in. He goes into the paint. He's going underneath. That ball's going to be ripped away. Steal coming for Jake Neubauer. Neubauer gives it to Butler underneath the Dre. He's going to be backing down. He puts up a shot. Soft touch. Mitch Dre gets it to go. 
81 to 64. This game has been an offensive explosion for the Tigers. Right now, the Griffins are trying to keep pace. They seem to be slipping a little bit. And there's a shot that's no good, missing for Shark. Rebound by Dre. Banks gives it to Neubauer. And he gives it to Dre, and there's a call on the floor. And this one, if it's against Baker, he might be done for the night. And, yep, that's his fifth. So Tristan Baker has fouled out. And James Wiggins will take his place. Only takes five fouls here in the St. Louis Intercollegiate Athletic Conference to foul out. Cameron Mack goes to the bench. Jared Fernandez will take his place. And Butler will attempt free throws. So the Tigers are now in the bonus. Hits the free throw, 24 points now for the senior leader of this team. He has one more attempt coming. It's up and good. 83 to 64 our score. And McCann will bring the ball up. He goes over to Wiggins on the right side. Wiggins gives it to Shark, who gives it back to McCann. Now he's guarded by Banks, and Banks has done a good job of guarding him. And now we're seeing Woodcock back down. He puts up a shot off the glass, gets it to go. 83 to 66. Tigers out in front. Dre has it. Picked up on a double team. Goes back to Banks. Goes over to Neubauer, who's going to drive in, and he's trying to find Brock Butler on a cut, but Butler actually was going the opposite direction, so a turnover there by the Tigers. Right now, Brock Butler leads with 25 points. Mitch Dre has 18. We have a trio of Griffins in double digits. You have McCann, Wiggins at 11, and there's a shot that falls, and that was McCann, who now has 13, so they're no longer tied up. And then Shark, who's played limited minutes because he's been in foul trouble, has 10 points. Banks trying to find Fernandez. Ball's on the ground. It's going to be Woodcock who passes it away. And that's going to be a takeaway for the Griffins. And McCann dribbling, goes into the paint, puts up a wild layup, hits the bottom of the backboard. No good. Banks passes it up to Neubauer, who, oh, had a good idea. Neubauer has some creative passing ideas, but he just can't get them to uh, fruition, if you will. Well, there's no sense to speed up the game right now. The, that's that pass very is true. very unnecessary. You just want to run time now. Time's your ally. You got a 15-point lead. Exactly. With 6:46 left to play here, the Tigers are just trying to hold on for their second win of the season. McCann has it on the outside, guarded by Banks. He gives it off to Goodnight. He goes over to Wiggins. And now Goodnight underneath the basket. He gives it to Shark. The ball's on the ground. They're going to be fighting for it. He passes it out, and now we have a now we have a foul called. This will be against Jared Fernandez. That's his second of the game. So with five minutes and 50 seconds left in this ball game, Tigers right now hold on to an 85 to 68 lead. Griffin's still fighting hard, though, so you never want to count him out. Wiggins has it. He's guarded by Butler. He goes up top, and that's going to be with Shark. And now we have a foul called. And we had a double team there of Neubauer and Dre trying to jump the passing lane. And that time it was actually Fernandez jumping the lane, and he gets his third foul. So he will come out. Austin Rebel will check in. Tigers still going full throttle here. Foot on the gas. Shots up. And good. So now it's 85 to 69. Jared Woodcock's come off the bench for the Griffins. He's done a nice job. He's got nine points looking for number 10. If he hits this one, we will have four Griffins in double digits. And there they are. They have Woodcock, Shark, Wiggins, and McCann all in double digits. So they've had even scoring, but not enough of it. Rebel right now will have the ball picked by McCann, and McCann's looking for his teammates. He wanted a heads up there, and McCann goes uncontested down the entire length of the court. He has 15 points. It's now 85 to 72. Neubauer puts the ball on the ground. It's going to be tipped out by Wiggins. Neubauer gets it, and he somehow gives it off to Mitch Dre. Heads up play there by the former Clipper. Dre loses the handle. 
And we have had some loose balls all over the court so far in this uh, last minute and a half. Good night to Wiggins, three-pointer. It's up, no good. The rebound will be coming down with Mitch Dre. And again, like you said, Kent, they need to slow the tempo down. And that's what Austin Banks is doing. And a timeout taken on the court. And Coach Huseman wants to have that discussion. They take a timeout. We'll take one with them. 85-72, our score. Four minutes and 51 seconds left to play. We'll be back with more here on KILJ Radio after these messages. Mount Pleasant Electric can provide a full range of services, including construction for commercial, residential, agricultural, and industrial. They're the largest electrical contractor in Mount Pleasant. Their focus is on Mount Pleasant. They are proud to have been involved with so many community projects. Large projects or small, whatever your electrical projects are, they can make it happen with their experience and care. Mount Pleasant Electric, providing a full range of services with quality customer care. Learn more about the company at Mount Pleasant Electric. Welcome back, folks. Taylor Went, Kent Bennett here in Olin G. Rubel Arena. We have just under five minutes left to play. Right now, Tigers lead 85 to 72, but uh, the emotions and the adrenaline getting a little too much of the Tigers. So, Coach Huseman called the timeout, and they are kind of slow things down. They just want to eat the clock as much as they can to try to hold on for their second win of the season. And right now, Kent. Yeah, it looks like the huddle's been pretty relaxed, and Coach Huseman, again, just saying, slow your roll. There's no need to go that fast. Well, you know, a lot of times, kids this age, it doesn't make difference whether you're in high school or college, you got that lead that's pretty comfortable, but you still want to score some more, and there's a time in the game where you got to say, hey, let's put the reins on this, slow it down, take a good shot, and I would imagine right now out of this timeout, Coach Huseman has called a set play, whether they're in a zone or a man-to-man, -to, -man, to get a good and easy bucket. Austin Banks will get it. He'll go to Mitch Dre, and Dre had a shot there, but they're just going to, like you said, it looks like a set play here. They're just going to move it around. Outside for Banks. He's going to be dribbling it up. He hands it off. This will be with Butler. Butler guarded tightly here by Wiggins. Gives it to Austin Rebel, and Rebel traveled on his drive to the basket. And it looked like it was going to be a good move there for the big man, but he took one too many steps. You know, in the first half, the Wesleyan Tigers only had four turnovers, and they've got eight so far in this half. So the turnover bug finally caught up with them. Wiggins goes over to Woodcock, back to Wiggins. He's guarded now by Butler underneath. This is good night. They're going to move it around. McCann pump fakes. He's going to drive into the paint. He goes up strong with a man in his face, able to score. McCann now has 17 points for the Griffins, 85-74. The Tigers have to be moving the ball. Banks has it. He gives it back to Butler. They got to pass half court. They do with Neubauer. And Neubauer is going to be almost pushed. And Banks is able to save him there and get the ball. Banks is going to be kicking it off. Here's Neubauer. He's going to go to the paint. Puts up a shot. Gets the foul, but can't get the bucket. So he will go to the line and shoot two. And that's a good play there for Neubauer. Coach Thornhill is not happy with his team right now. They probably should have had a takeaway just a moment ago on Austin or not on Austin Banks, on Neubauer, but Banks is able to save him. First free throw is good for Neubauer. He has three points now in this game. But a lot of what Jake Neubauer does doesn't show up on these stat sheets. He's one of those players that makes the small plays that are necessary for the big plays, and he hits his second free throw here, 87-74. to 74. Last game, he had 20 points against Westminster, one of his career gays. And now Wiggins has it on the right side. They're going to go underneath. This is with Shark. He's guarded by Rebel. He puts up a hook shot. No good. Gets his own rebound. He goes up and can't get the putback either. Uh, rebound that time for Jared Woodcock is good. So now it's 87-76. to 76. The Tigers are just trying to hold on here. And Banks is being double teamed. He's able to split him. A tremendous job of dribbling there for Austin Banks. Butler lays it up off the glass. He's still in attack mode. 89 to 76, Butler with 29 points. And there's Shark going hard into the paint. He's able to score 89 to 78, three minutes left to play. Neubauer gets the ball, gives it back to Banks. And Banks will be fouled that time by Wiggins and they're in the bonus. So Banks 
will now go to the line and shoot some free throws. And when you're in the bonus and you're going to commit a foul, you got to make sure they're smart fouls, not one where Banks is just trying to get past half court. Banks having a friendly conversation there with the official before getting the ball for the free throw. It's up and good. So it's now 90 to 78. And the Tigers have had back-to-back -back very good offensive games. Last week, or not last week, but last Saturday, they scored 82 points against Westminster. They lost by five, uh, but 82 points, and Westminster was one of the better defensive teams. That was a good showing. And then tonight, they've exploded for 91 points. We're seeing the Tigers just find their rhythm on offense. It could have something to do with the return of Mitch Dre. It could be the emergence of Austin Rebel, who sets up a lot of screens. Whatever it is, it's been working for the Tigers. There's a shot from Goodnight. That's good from the baseline corner. Back to an 11 point game, 91 to 80. Banks has it. He's gonna just split the defenders and there's a foul called and that will be against Coddington. And Austin Banks back to the free throw line and the Griffin bench with the signs of frustration, not happy with that call. So Banks having plenty of opportunities here to get some free throws. We're going to have a pair of Tigers checking in. Shots up. No good. A little too much on there for Banks. Elijah Johnson will check in, taking the place of Austin Rebel. It looks like Cameron Mack will be checking in for Austin Banks. We have two minutes and 21 seconds left to play. Tigers lead by 11, 91 to 80. Makes the second, so 92 to 80 our score. Banks will head to the bench. Cameron Mack will check in. Your five on the court right now, Brock Butler, Jake Neubauer, Mitch Dre, Elijah Johnson, and Cameron Mack. McCann gets a roller in to save some time, but the clock was already rolling, so I don't know how much time he's actually saving. Well, it shouldn't have been started until he touched the that's, ball. That's what I was thinking, but the official game clock already was in motion. There's going to be a ball underneath, and Shark had a hand on it, but that was a poor pass, and it goes out of bounds. So Tigers will take over after the turnover. Butler splits defenders, and that's going to send him to the line, and Kent, this is now what modern day basketball is at the end of a game. It's the slow, monotonous, free throw, foul, free throw, foul, the, the and jigsaw that goes, puzzle. That goes to support my rule change, Taylor. What's that? No foul outs. Oh, that's not a bad idea. If you stay in the game and on your sixth foul, the other team gets two shots and the ball out of bounds. That's not a bad idea. <laughs> and if people think that's going to prolong the game, but what's happening right now? It's foul, it's, foul, it's foul, prolonged. shoot, shoot, shoot. Especially if they get the ball back, too. Yeah, a lot of teams wouldn't do that. I like that idea. We need to talk to someone. Well, I have tried to. <laughs> Nobody listens. It's the only sport where you penalize the kids where your best players can't play. That is true. And Butler hits both, so now it's 94 to 80. We have two minutes and one second left to play here in the game. They take a timeout. We'll take one with them. We'll be right back after these messages on KILJ. When the summer's heat is sweltering or the winter's cold is freezing, you want to make sure that your home can handle it all. And that's where CNM Cooling, Heating, and Plumbing comes in. Their staff has professionals with the expertise to ensure that your current system is running at its full ability and can fix any problems or issues you may have. CNM is a trusted local business that demonstrates their commitment to their customers time and time again. They make sure that you and your family are comfortable no matter what kind of weather Mother Nature brings. Call CNM Cooling, Heating, and Plumbing today at 319-385-4125. Welcome back, folks. Kaylor Went, Kent Bennett up here in Olin G. Rubel Arena. We're getting into the final minutes of this game, and uh, we officially have two minutes and a single second left to play. Tigers are up by 14, 94 to 80, and we were talking during the break. It's going to be this, uh, the, how modern basketball games that are somewhat close always end. Somebody fouls and then someone goes to the free throw line. There's no really fluid motion within the last three to four minutes of a close basketball game. 
Uh, Tigers, though, are sitting comfortably 94 to 80. So unless we see one of the greater comebacks in uh, basketball history here in the last two minutes, looks like the Tigers are going to be able to hold on for their second win. And this will also be their second conference win. So we'll see. We have two minutes left to go. They can. Picks the ball up off the ground. Dre, he was coming up to threaten to pick it up for him. They're going to move it around. Woodcock underneath the shark. He's guarded by Butler. He's going to need help. Outside to McCann. He's going to go into the paint. Puts up a floater. Can't get it to fall. He gets his own rebound, though. Wow. And he's underneath the basket. He's going to need some help. He cooks it out to Woodcock, who goes up. No good. Gets his own offensive rebound. He puts it back. So rebound, still a problem here for the Tigers. Right now, 94 to 82. Elijah Johnson gives it off to Neubauer. Neubauer gives it to Mack. And Mack's going to split defenders and just give it off to Brock Butler. As we have 80 seconds left to play. Butler's not going to try to drive. And he's going to say, the only way you're going to get this ball is if you foul me. He gives it off to Dre. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Butler has the ball again, gets a screen. He's going to look for help. He's going to pull up for three, and no good. Rebound will be taken in that time by Shark. It's going to be McCann. He goes up strong. He gets the bucket and the foul. So now, wait a minute. We might have some drama here late in the game. As Chris McCann will go to the line and shoot an and one shot here. He's cut it to a 10-point lead. He has an and one opportunity with 61 seconds left to play. McCann has 19 points, and that foul is against Brock Butler. Shots up. No good. The rebound will be hauled in, and this will be by Butler, and he'll be fouled that time by Woodcock. And now Butler will trot himself down to the free throw line and try to put the nails in the coffin. And the other four Tigers all going to the sidelines to talk with Coach Huseman. He's saying we got to just play calm, cool, and collected to win this one. Misses the first free throw, so we'll see if Butler can make it a one-for-two trip. Second shot's up, and it's good. So 95-84 to 84 our score. 32 points for Brock Butler. And now McCann will drive, and he'll be fouled. And that one will be Cameron Mack, and that doesn't make a lot of sense to foul either. So now McCann will go to the line and shoot some free throws, and that's, that's Cameron Mack's first foul of the game. Here comes the first free throw. It's up. Spaying good. 10-point game, 95 to 85, and we still have one more free throw coming. McCann has 20 points. And here comes the second free throw. It's up. And good, 2-2 two two on that trip, and a timeout taken. And they're going to take a quick timeout. We'll take one with them. 54 seconds left to play from Olin G. Rubel Arena. We'll be back right after these messages. A monument is the chance to leave a lasting tribute to a loved one. You know that the Murphy Funeral Home can help you plan a funeral, but they are also proud to offer monument sales as well. When a loved one dies, honor them with a quality, lasting piece. From rough granite to setup, they can make your dream a reality. Custom orders are available, and they are locally represented to handle all of your needs. Leave a lasting, loving tribute. Learn more at BeattyMurphyFH.com. The Murphy Funeral Home of Mount Pleasant. Services with dignity, compassion, honesty, and affordability. Welcome back, folks. Kayla Went, Kent Bennett here for the final 54 seconds. And right now, it's down to a nine-point game. The Tigers will have possession. Newbauer will be doing the inbounding. Your five on the court, Jake Newbauer, Mitch Dre, Brock Butler, Elijah Johnson, and Cameron Mack. Elijah gives it off to Mack, who puts up an easy score. 97 to 86 our score. So Kent, you might be on the money. We might see the triple digits. I think so. Right now, McCann gives it underneath the shark. He's gonna try to drive in. He's gonna need some help though, and he's trying to find somebody. He gives it to Thomas Ritter, who puts up a Hail Mary of a three-pointer, and he gets it to fall. And another timeout taken, but we will stay here for this one. So with 34 seconds, right now it's 97 to 89. 
And Kent, that three-pointer just gave life into the Griffins, even though it might be short-lived. <laughs> I tell you, there's been a lot of scoring tonight, and there's nobody that's afraid to put the ball up. That's true. If they're open, it's up. Confidence is at an all-time high in this game for both of these teams. And so far, we have Brock Butler with 32 points. Elijah Johnson has 11. And Cameron Mack, surprisingly off the bench, has 11 points. Mitch Dre has 18. And Jake Neubauer has four. And those are the five players that are on the court right now. Every single player on the court for the Griffins is in double digits. That's pretty impressive. Uh, they are led by Chris McCann, who has 21 points. And the Griffins already breaking huddle. They know what their job is. They either need to force a turnover or they need to foul immediately. And Neubauer will be doing the inbounding here. They've had, the Griffins have had 33 points off their bench. That's, that's great production. And Butler inbounds, and he's going to fly up the court, and they're just going to give it to Dre. Dre's just going to kick it out, and oh, Elijah Johnson lost it. And that's out of bounds, so a costly turnover here for the Tigers. There's only 26 seconds left to play, but the Griffins are going to play it like they're down by one. They're going to play it as long as they can here. McCann gets the inbound, guarded by Butler. He gives it off to Shark. And he's going to be driving in. He's going to kick it out. And there's a three-pointer for Woodcock. And that's good. And now it's down to a five-point game. The Tigers are starting to lose control here. They lead by five. But that lead keeps shrinking and shrinking. And we're going to stay here again during this timeout. So now <laughs> 17 seconds. It's 97 to 92. And Kent, they were pushing too hard down here. Turned into a turnover. That turnover turned into three points. And now it's only a five-point lead. Yeah, and when you try to pass the ball when you're in the air or on the run, the end result is not good most of the time, and it wasn't good that time, and it was really an unforced error because he had three other guys he could have passed to. There's no sense of getting fancy at this point in the game. You're trying to work the clock. Right now, 17 and a half seconds left, and uh, if you're the Griffins, you got to think you've got time, and if you're Wesleyan, you got to hope that clock runs a little faster than it's running. <laughs> Because right now with 17.6 seconds officially left to play, Tigers do lead uh, by nine, uh, 97 to 92. But just moments ago, they had a 11-point lead they were holding on to. Now it's been cut down to five, but they still have the advantage of time. And well, they, I think right now if you're in the, if you huddle the Griffins and you're listening to Coach Thornhill, you're saying, Coach Car Thornhill is saying to his kids, we've got to try to get the five-second count on the out-of-bounds play keep them from getting the ball inbounds, but if they do get it inbounds, then we got to foul right away. And they tried that last time, and Butler was able to split the defenders and fly up the court. Neubauer trying to inbound. He's looking for someone. He's going to give it off to Butler, and Butler is not going to be fouled. He'll get past half court, and then he's finally fouled that time by Wiggins. Wiggins picking up his fourth foul. You know, Butler was looking for a foul early, but I'm glad he didn't get fouled in the backcourt because he ran off probably an extra three or four seconds That's trying to drill into the front court. With 13 seconds now, he'll have a opportunity to score two more for the Tigers. First one's up and rattles around, no good. So free throws, if there's one weakness in tonight's game, it's been free throws. Now we're going to have Garrett Goodnight checking back in. He'll take Wiggins' place. I think I've, I've got him for 19 out of 36 from the free throw line. A lot of games, you're not going to win that kind of percentage and there is a good free throw it's now 98 to 92 33 points for Butler 10 seconds left and here comes McCann he's flying up he gets a bank shot to go in and now it's a four point game 98 to 94 with 7.8 seconds and again we're going to stay here because of how fast paced this end